These are some of the things that James Welsh made me buy. He didn't just make me buy them, he stole my credit card. You know how you can like customize your credit cards with pretty little pictures? He was like, oh, that credit card is so cute, can I see it? And he took it, and I swear to God, credit card companies, it is his fault that all of these charges appeared. I can't explain them. Something happened over there across the Atlantic Ocean, and you cannot charge me this ridiculous bill this month because this was completely against my will. It was part of a cult initiation. I mean club. Yeah. <laughs> James Welsh is a personified toner slash essence. He is all about the glow. He shares his skin openly and from his experience as a stylist with a degree in photography or graphics or something in that creative field, all the way to his knowledge about skincare and the way he reviews and discusses products, his content is both informational and spend your money onable like no one else's. His voice is also like ASMR and if you don't know who he is, check yourself. And if you do know who he is, then consider this your weekly reminder that he and his twin brother, Robert Welsh, are not the same person. Because yes, they also have a YouTube channel called The Welsh Twins, and a podcast, if you didn't know. He has made me try such an array of products, and some I have fallen in love with, and others were gigantic misses for me. So today, let's talk about that. Let's talk about all things skin, and review the things that he has made me review. <laughs> This first one is from Indeed Labs. These are the vitamin C brightening drops, and James Walsh actually did a campaign with them. He's been obsessed with their products for a while, and I've never tried them. People ask me about them all the time, and I'm like, I don't know, should I, should I not? He actually did a really cool TikTok video in which the brand literally asked him to show his face with no filter, show his imperfections, and show his skincare. Indeed Labs seems pretty cool. I like a lot of their ingredients. They are no longer this single ingredient skincare, but they kind of combine things, and specifically for this product, James talked about how they have an encapsulated vitamin C, which is better for people who have sensitivities to L-ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is wonderful, but it can be a finicky molecule, so the fact that this is put in a little light sealed container is nice. And here's the thing about vitamin C, is that it works better in acidic environments, but usually that means it can cause irritation, especially for people who have sensitive skin. He called this a milky hydrating texture that he said felt like a light lotion. One of the only vitamin C serums I've used that has like this milky hydrating texture to it. And I do like this one. I have to say it's probably not my favorite vitamin C in the world. The Dear Claire's is definitely more of an experience for me, but if you want a vitamin C that doesn't feel like a vitamin C, like it doesn't heat up, it's not stingy, it's not tingly, this might be one of your favorites. He's totally right. It does go on super milky and super creamy. It does absorb into the skin nicely, and it doesn't leave the skin feeling sticky, um, as some vitamin C serums can. The price for this was absolutely right, and it's also got hyaluronic acid in here, which we know is a great humectant. Um, hyaluronic acid can come at different weights, some that do absorb, some that don't. James Welsh used to be obsessed with hyaluronic acid, and then it actually irritated his skin and he had to stop. However, it really does depend on the molecular weight and what else you are layering that product with, or what else it has been formulated with. I personally recommend getting a mixed multi-molecular weight or getting a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid if you are concerned about dryness. This also has volcanic soil, which is very interesting. I don't know the difference between volcanic soil and pumice. This is something that from a chemistry standpoint I need to look into, but James described them as having a little bit of an antioxidant boost, and you know, it doesn't feel grainy or anything on the skin. I feel like I need to use this a little bit more because it is new to me, but so far, so good. Then this is the Dear Claire's Gentle Black Cleansing Oil, and James says that this is his favorite cleansing oil. He's saying he's always reaching for it, he's always grabbing it, he says that it leaves his skin looking amazing but not overly stripped, and I got this on Style Vana. I thought that it would actually be black or turn milky black, and I was disappointed. You see, sometimes when I listen to James's stuff, sometimes I'm editing a YouTube video or I'm going for a walk or I'm eating lunch, and even though I have a YouTube video on in the background, I'm not actually watching it, I'm kind of listening to it. And he has mentioned this so many times that I got it. I think it was after the first or second time I heard him say it. And when I got it, I expected it to be black or like turn black, and it didn't. And I was very disappointed. And then I realized that the term black in this cleanser actually comes from the ingredients, not from the color. Now, although I was disappointed with the color, I was not disappointed in how it works. James Welsh loves a good glowy, dewy feel to the skin, and this definitely helps you achieve that without overly cleansing or overly stripping. It is really good for his sebum control and production. I feel the same for mine, and he is right, it has no irritating feeling whatsoever. 
It's made with black bean oil, black sesame, and black currant seed. And again, even though it is a super oily cleanser, it really does get rid of makeup and waterproof sunscreen, which I love. And you know that I wear every damn day because SPF is your BFF. It is inexpensive, it is affordable, and even the aesthetic of the product kind of reminds me of James Welsh. Like, put a little purple crescent moon in there, and you pretty much nailed it. I absolutely love this, and the fact that he literally stole my money, and it just showed up in a package that happened to be addressed to my house, and I just happened to use it. I don't know how it happened, but I'm not angry that it did. <laughs> Then, before all of the sunscreen drama, James Welsh and Hiram were both responsible for me getting this. This is the Centella Green Level Unscented Sunscreen PA++++++++++++ and it's supposed to be an SPF 50, although now in hindsight we know that it was more like an SPF 19 to 20. Here's the thing, before all of this came out, this was definitely one of the internet's favorite sunscreens. Even James Welsh said that this was something that had no irritation, it gave him no white cast. He did mention it gets stuck in his beard a little bit. Now, overall, he could not rave about this enough. He said so many great things about it, and after hearing both him and Hiram rave about it and the price, I was like, okay, I have to try it. And I actually was not impressed by it. I kind of felt bad because I was going against what everyone else was saying, but my body different, my skin different, and my skin did not like this. For me, it was a little bit too glowy. Since I am naturally oily and acne prone, this was just too greasy for me. And it wasn't even that like dew that the Isn't Tree sunscreen gives me. It was just like, it's straight up pretty greasy, pretty pasty. I also didn't find it to be moisturizing. On my oily but dehydrated days, it didn't really help. And um, you know, was it an amazing sunscreen? I don't know, I was never in full sun with this. So I didn't notice the difference between the SPF 20 and the SPF 50. However, in hindsight, we now know that that was not the truth, and James Walsh did do a video kind of talking about what happened. I'm really happy that Purito did refund people. We have a video to do on this brand, but I do love a lot of their products, and I know that a lot of people did love this one. Now, fun fact, I was trying to get this independently tested alongside some other sunscreens, and because of the second COVID lockdown, um, the contacts that I was using and the company that I was trying to work with, basically some of them ended up getting let go, and then to test this at a different lab within the United States was very costly and very time efficient. And unless somebody has $50,000 lying around or like an extra Tesla they can give me, I've kind of hit a brick wall. And I'm trying to see if I can turn that brick wall into a speed bump or if there's a, like another way to drill through it or go around it. Cause yeah, I got like cock blocked by the coronavirus, which was really frustrating. But I mean, that was the essence of 2020 for everyone. I shouldn't be complaining, but basically, to be determined, James Welsh and Hyra made me buy it, and you know what? I didn't like it when I tried it, and that's just the truth as of my skin. Now, something that I did try and love is this. This is the Cerise Time is Running Out Mist, and James Welsh even says you apply this in the morning when you are too lazy to do anything else, and that right there, I was sold. My lazy ass that wakes up at 5.30 in the morning because I schedule a meeting for 6 a.m., but I stayed up until 1 a.m. the night before, is always in jeopardy of running late, and although I love to do my skincare, my morning routine is a bit more minimal, whereas my evening routine is where I do have a lot more fun. But the way James Welsh described this, I had to try it and I do love this. I am on my second bottle. It does have essential oils, so it's not for everyone, but my skin actually tolerates this quite well. It's full of antioxidants, which help to prevent damage that happens through the day. It's also full of glycerin, so it's a bit hydrating to the skin, and it has one of my favorite oils, which is jojoba oil. You know that my skin loves jojoba oil, and this is great because it's not one of those water in a can sprays that could actually lead to more transepidermal water loss, but because it has oils, it actually has a moisturizing effect, so it actually locks things into the skin. It can make you look a little bit greasy if you go ham with it. I definitely don't recommend applying too, too much much, but just a spray here or there is absolutely beautiful. He says it gives you a fresher looking complexion, he says it's great for dry skin and oily skin for summer and winter, and I do agree. Again, I was really pleased with this. I need to look into this brand more, but overall, 
I don't know why they're calling it time is running out because it's not the time that's running out, it's my money that's running out because I just keep buying this over and over again. Now James Welsh is pretty much the single-handed reason that I have tried the COSRX brand and I am so happy that I did. I am blemish prone and this right here is the AC Collection Ultimate Spot Cream. He got me hooked on this as well as their other vegan and cruelty-free products. This stuff is so cool. Uh, James specifically said that he didn't like the tube that it comes in, but I actually did not mind it at all. It comes off this super pasty wipe because it does have zinc oxide, but it blends in absolutely sheer. Zinc oxide is anti-inflammatory for acne, and he's used this for both pimples and I believe his hyperpigmentation spots. He mentioned that he actually uses it in a way that he literally applies it to spots and just kind of sits it on there, and then after a while it absorbs into the skin and he blends it in. For me, I found it to be really fun to just kind of sweep over my blemish areas, because when I get blemishes, I don't get just like one blemish, I get like poof, clovers taking over your backyard lawn. And by clovers and weeds, I mean pimples, and by backyard lawn, I mean the front of my face. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> This has acetic acid, this has centella, this has tea tree, it has a lot of ingredients, but as is K-Beauty fashion, they're really gentle on the skin. And K-Beauty doesn't have a lot of options for acne-friendly products. Um, I did film a video on my K-Beauty acne routine, um, products that I would recommend if you are blemish prone, but I wish I had known about this product back when I did that. I wish that James had stolen my credit card a month before, because this would have definitely been included. This is a great spot treatment, you can use it all over the face and it is not the most aggressive but it is gentle and for myself when I want something gentle but that's still effective boop boop there I go then this is something that worked for James but not for me boy did I have a bad time with this one and this one comes with a disclaimer this is the Foreo UFO 2 and there are many people who love this James Welsh when he did a review with them actually said that so many people that he knows loved this product and I understand that everyone has different preferences. For me, I had a horrible experience. Now, I have purchased many Foreo products on my own. I have had many gifted to me. That does not sway my opinions. And simultaneously, if I read instructions diligently, then maybe I would have had a better time. But I don't always treat instructions with the same amount of interest, care, and scrutiny that I do ingredients lists and formulation sheets. Now, let me tell you, when I got this, I had the worst time Ever. This comes with an app, and James Welsh really loves the app experience. He says that it really helps to enhance his skincare routine and help him focus on it. For me, I found that to be super distracting, and it just goes to show that everyone practices self-care in a different way. Now, here's the real kicker. When I tried to download the app from my American iPhone in America, from the US App Store, with no VPN or anything else happening, it downloaded in Russian. I could not figure out how to even sign up to use this because the damn device wouldn't turn on without me having the app and literally scanning a barcode because yes, as James Welsh loves the little masks that it comes with, Foreo does make you and force you, not in a good way force you, but like in a bad way force you, to purchase these masks that you hook onto this little doohickey right here. And it seems like a great idea until you realize that the device doesn't want to start up unless you scan that barcode and you have to keep on repurchasing those to keep putting money in Foreo's pocket. It's ingenious when it comes to ripping you off for your money. And the masks, James Welsh said that they were very, very hydrating. There was a lot of like juiciness in there, but they didn't drip all over the place. They were very contained. The masks are this big, and I understand that they're biodegradable. He really loves them for those reasons, but you're paying a lot of money for something really, really tiny, and I did not find them to be that enjoyable. Anyways, back to this Russian debacle. I can read Russian and phonically speak out what it says, but I have no idea what it means. And specifically, this happened on a live stream. I just could not figure this out. Finally, I figured out how it worked. I tried to attach the mask. I tried to start using it, and boy, was I disappointed. So this is supposed to be an LED device, right? LED stands for light emitting diode. There is medical research to prove that at the right wavelength and at the right power, it can penetrate into the skin and have effects and cascade changes on cells, such as coaxing your fibroblasts to make some more collagen or killing acne bacteria. Here's the thing. You have to use some pretty powerful LED 
lights to get those effects. And you have to make sure that you are wearing glasses or goggles to protect your eyeballs. The little redness that kind of beeps around the corners here, that is not having a major impact on the skin. That is not LED, that is a straight up joke, if I have ever seen it. Their whole thing is that each mask has like a different vibrational pattern that penetrates this into the skin. I didn't find that at all, I just found it to be super, super annoying. And it is cool that it kind of heats up and cools down, but might I say, that heat and cold, literally take your favorite face mask, put it in the fridge, take it out, and there you go, you have some cold therapy. Get a towel warmer, get a clay mask that you can heat up in the microwave for 15 seconds and then apply that to the face, and there you go, you have just DIY'd yourself a replacement for this, which is $300. Also, do you see how the ring around this gets so dirty? When you're rubbing it on your face, it gets the nasties, it gets the grody skincare stuff from the mask or whatever is happening all over the side of this, and because it's silicone, Cone, it stains. You can't clean it off. It just gets disgusting. And then this side, it doesn't do anything. It's just heavy. Like, it, it does nothing. Don't put this on your face. It's gonna be really scrubby. You'll create scratches and tears in your skin. I was so unbelievably disappointed by this, especially from the efficacy point, from the user experience point. And you know, I understand that certain people really love it, more power to them. I just had a horrible experience. And James spoke really honestly about his experience. That's something I've always appreciated about him, whether it is organic content or sponsored content. He always talks about his actual experience. I feel that I can trust him and believe in what he's saying, and he's going to tell me what he did or didn't like. And I understand that he loves loved this, but this does go to show that everyone's skin is different, everyone's self-care routine is different, and for him, having an app that guides him through how to do this was super helpful, and for me, it was just annoying. Like, I know skincare, I've been obsessed with it for 11 years now, I know how to massage my face, and the little app felt like a backseat driver, like telling me what to do, and then it was telling me things that I didn't agree with, I was getting spam calls on my phone when I was trying to pay attention to the app, it just was not relaxing for me at all, it was stressful. And the fact that the first three times I tried it, it was in Russian. Like, this is a Swedish company anyways. Why does a Swedish company have a Russian app that got downloaded to my phone in America? I just don't understand. The man from the UK convinced me to try the device that was built in Sweden that downloaded with a Russian app even though I was in America on the American App Store. It makes no sense, but that has been my experience with it. And I know James loves it. I trust and I respect his experience and his recommendations, but boy oh boy, this was not for me. Oh no, yet. Let's go die in Russian. Idiomri. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go get more hot chocolate. And by hot chocolate, I mean coffee. The next product that James Welsh made me buy did not take a ton of convincing, and he actually didn't have to steal my credit card for this one. I love the Inky List already, but he definitely got me hooked on this. This is the Ceramide Night Treatment, and this is supposed to be a hydrator for skin that is full of ceramides. We know that those are essential to our skin, specifically when it comes to how our barrier is created, and the outer layer of the skin is made up of 50% ceramides. Especially if you're lacking them and you've overstripped, you need to replenish. And this was interesting because this is actually a mask. I normally see ceramides in moisturizers, etc., but this is kind of like an overnight mask night treatment. And when I heard James talk about it, I knew that I had to bestow it, my digital cart, with the likeness of its ceramide goodness. He called it a standout product and said it was really affordable, and it does contain a lot of my favorite ingredients. He specifically mentioned jojoba oil and hyaluronic acid, um, as well as the three ceramides that are in here. He mentioned that it's kind of between a serum and a moisturizer, and it definitely does come off as like this medium thickness. Um, it melts onto the skin nicely, and again, it's basically an overnight moisture mask, which is just basically an overnight moisturizer. But technically, I don't see anything in here that you couldn't use during the day. Even though it's made for the night, I feel like you could use it for the day too. It's got Ceramide NP, Ceramide AP, and Ceramide EOP, and it is extraordinarily inexpensive and affordable and accessible because yes, it is at Sephora. I don't know if it's at Ulta yet. I know the Inky List is in Boots in the UK, but around here, the interwebs, Sephora, as Siri likes to call it, I would say a solid 8 out of 10. James Welsh would make me do it all over again. 
James Welsh also convinced me to try Beauty Pie. They are basically the Costco of beauty. They, fun fact, use some of the same laboratories that very high-end brands do, such as Estee Lauder and Elizabeth Arden, and they basically take similar formulas, if not the same formulas, and put them in less expensive packaging, and using a membership are able to make them cheaper. I originally saw James Welsh's video on this brand and I was extraordinarily intrigued and then before I had the chance to spend my own money and throw my own money at it, Beauty Pie offered to let me test out their products and work on a video together, which was exciting. But many of the products that you saw even featured in that video were ones that James Welsh made me try. The way it works is that you can purchase their products just flat out, but they are like the luxury price. But if you do pay a membership, you get a certain amount to spend each month and you are able to get the products at a discount. And when you actually see that the manufacturer's cost for this is like $12 or like $15, it is crazy to see brands marking these things up to 80 to 110 to 130. But fun fact, that is just how the beauty business goes. And yes, it can be very ugly on the manufacturer side. But speaking of trying to be pretty, James Walsh made me try this. This is the Japan Fusion Deep Treatment Serum with antioxidants, vitamin C, and grape polyphenols. He called it an energizing serum, and it does have antioxidants, which he mentioned can kind of help protect the skin throughout the day. He said that some of the antioxidants help with pigment spots and to prevent free radical aging, which is true. I just don't feel like this product is super potent enough to do that. But is it a luxurious product? Yes, absolutely. This one definitely looks and feels like luxury. Um, it's definitely very Estee Lauder, but without the Estee Lauder price. And I am so grateful that James Welsh got me hooked on these, even though the fragrance in some of these were not my favorite. The fact that we have legit luxury beauty dupes, like down to the lab and the manufacturer is epic. These were also made by um, Marcia Kilgore, 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 Marcia, Marcia. I still can't pronounce her name and I feel so bad about it. Um, but she's the founder of Beauty Pie and Soap and Glory. She is a serial entrepreneur because she knows how to do things right. And she actually does things right by consumers and what we want and need. I actually have a video that I did all about all of the different products that I got, which ones I ended up loving, not so much loving, and why. I just am like super behind on editing it. So yeah. I'm a horrible editor. <laughs> it just takes me forever and then I don't get around to it. It's great. <laughs> What else I thought would be great is the Beauty Pie Uber Youth Serum, and I toss my products a lot, and apparently people don't like it, so I am sorry. But James Welsh raved about this, and so I had to try it. This is an intense hydrating marine complex, and we know that James Welsh loves a good glow. Marine complexes are pretty great, especially when they are vegan and cruelty-free. And this does blend into the skin pretty dreamily. I am not a fan of the scent of either of these. I really don't hate fragrance in my products. I know James doesn't either. He's even mentioned in the past that there's a time and a place for them, which I totally agree on. And simultaneously, I feel like you have to enjoy your skincare products in order to use them. And for some people that means fragrance, and for some people that means fragrance-free. But these two products were both outliers for me because I really didn't enjoy the fragrance, especially not in comparison to the texture or the formula. You know, you know, there are some that I really don't mind, like Haru Haru, I really enjoy. But these ones, the scent is just not it for me. James specifically called out the fact that this one made his skin look plump and healthy, and yes, this one is a dupe for a very expensive Estee Lauder one. But I must say, as well as it works, I don't think it would be worth, what, the 60, 80, or even $110 that they wanna charge for it. For $12, absolutely. For $30, absolutely. I just need a little something that's more tailored to my acne prone and oily skin. Now, outside of these, because James Welsh made me try Beauty Pie and got me initially interested in it, I did pick up some other things which I actually loved a lot more. Specifically, oh my god, their capsules. The vitamin C capsules, the resveratrol capsules, those are some of my favorite things in the entire world and I cannot stop using them on my face. Also, spoiler alert, Cassandra got an eye cream. Yes, I got the Uber Youth eye cream and guess what? I actually love it as a moisturizer for the face. If you've been on this channel for a while, then you know that eye creams are basically overpriced moisturizers in tiny tubes and containers that they jack up the price on. And normally, if you can put it here, you can put it elsewhere on your face. And as long as it doesn't have strong fragrances or anything super irritating, if you can put it here, you can put it around the eyes. Just don't get it into your lacrimal glands and your meibomian glands or the conjunctiva of the eye, okay? 
But I ended up getting this, and boy, do I love this as a generalized moisturizer. And guess what? Even though it's an eye cream and it's in a tiny little tube, this is inexpensive enough that you can actually afford to rub it all over your face. Done deal. These are the absolute best. If you love popping pimples, ooh, you're gonna love these. These are so fun. Believe it or not, they're pretty much the perfect amount. Sometimes they're even a little bit much. Um, and they are just so fun and entertaining to use. If you love popping skincare, if you get stuck with all of those aesthetic posts of people like mixing random things like nail polish or food or lipsticks or skincare on Instagram, if you're that person stuck in the Instagram algorithm, these are going to be for you. They are so fun to pop and twist open and to squeeze out and to wipe all over your face. And they are inexpensive enough to do so. I love these. I have bought the vitamin C ones over and over and over again. And because they're in this dimethicone base, they're super pillowy. Like they're one of the most lightweight, fluffy textures that I've ever used of a vitamin C antioxidant. And it's probably a tie between this and the Dear Claire's as to what I am currently loving the most in the realm of vitamin C. And yes, this beats the ordinary big time. James Welsh also made me try Beauty Bay. And can I ask like a kind of dumb question? I always try to research my brands and I've recently been bogged down with just everything that life has thrown at me and the rest of us. But is Beauty Bay an MLM? I want to look into it and I could probably just sit here and Google it, but then I will look for 30 minutes to three hours going down the rabbit hole of what they've done, whether or not the brand gets the cast pass, all of those types of things. And um, I need to research this brand more. Are they an MLM? Are they not? I am confused. The Body Shop is an MLM. Did you guys know that The Body Shop was an MLM? There's a, a YouTube channel called Illuminati here that I would highly recommend you watch. We should do a video on them. Interesting. Anyways, James Welsh made me try it and one I did not like and the other I fell in love with. And this just goes to show that James Welsh, even though he is one of my favorite creators and he is amazingly talented, he's a wonderful product reviewer, a skin enthusiast, a graphic artist, a puppy dog dad, we still have have different skin types at the end of the day and what works for him doesn't always work for me. And this moisturizer was the perfect example. I know it's supposed to be a good one. It's the day one moisturizer. It has olive squalene and glycerin, which is James's go-to humectant. He says it's nice on the skin because it absorbs well, but you can still kind of feel it as like a protective layer on the skin, like it doesn't completely disappear. And he did say that it might be too light if you're super dry, which is why I thought it would be perfect for me and my oily prone skin. But with full transparency, this just wasn't it for me. It even says normal oily and combination skin types. The fragrance was not my favorite. The ingredients were fine, but there wasn't anything stand out to me. And the packaging, it even felt a little bit cheap to me. Like this just was not my jam, nor my jelly, nor my peanut butter sandwich. But you know what was all three of those? This next one that he recommended, and oh my God, I am in love. This is the Skin Hit Soothing Serum with Niacinamide and Copper, and it's for tackling excess oil and clogged pores, which hi, hello, is me. Who are you? I don't know. Bitch, please. He called this serum great all around, and although I was intrigued to try it, I had no idea how obsessed I would become. First off, the little stopper at the top is really cool because it is transparent. We don't see that often. This bottle, again, kind of like the moisturizer, was not my favorite. I feel like it feels kind of cheap, but boy, when you look inside, look at how beautiful that is. This is a beautiful blue serum indicative of the copper that is in this product. And it's also got niacinamide, which is great for oil control, stopping the spread of pigmentation, really helping to rebalance and reset the skin. And this, honestly, do you see how it's like this jelly blue? If you actually created like a marine serum, this is what I would expect it to be. It is hydrating, it absorbs well, it is silky, but you know how when you get out of the ocean, um, after you've been swimming in the ocean and there was some seaweed and like you are clean, you were like in the ocean, but you have that little film that's on your skin. It was either the salt water of the ocean or or maybe some of the seaweed, but it kind of hugs and grips your skin. That is what this does. This is like a fresh dip in the ocean. The only things they could have done to make this better are A, the packaging, and then B, adding a little bit of algae in there, adding a little bit of seaweed. It is super nice, it is super jelly. I love the blue color. I love the way it feels on my face, and the copper peptides are amazing. James mentioned the benefits of improving skin tone, elasticity, and helping with aging. And for me, this was a slam dunk for my oily prone, acne prone pores that just produce too much oil of their own. 
Nyad has another really cool copper serum that I do love, but this has got to be like my second runner up of the ones that I have tried at this point. I love it. And the pricing is good on this one too. And this just goes to show why James Welsh is truly magical, or should I say demonic? I don't know. What, what, what is magnetic? I don't know. What is the cult term here that we're looking for? He can make me buy anything, including two of almost the exact same thing because of the way he speaks about these things. When I was looking at some of James Welsh's reviews on different toners and different essences, I know how much he loves them. And I was like, should I get the Dear Claire's Unscented Supple Preparation one, or should I get the Daily Skin hydrating one. I don't know. I should pick one. And then I was like, well, one of them is more of a water toner and the other one is more of an essence. So I need both of them. And oh my God, I am so glad that I did. This right here is like a runny nose. It has some of my favorite ingredients. It's kind of gelatinous and I was expecting it to be a, more of a toner, but it actually has a little bit of thickness to it. And my skin just soaks this up. James Welsh has said that this one smells like a doctor's office and I'm trying to see what he understands because I completely disagree. I feel like this doesn't smell like much of anything. If you are more sensitive to fragrances or to scents, this might not be the one for you because it does have a little bit of rose, but it also has that copper tripeptide one, which my face just loves. It's got licorice, it's got arginine, and it's super, super soothing on the skin. And I really did, oh, I'm just gonna like press it onto my face the way that James does because I am obsessed with it. I really do love this one. He's mentioned this probably five times. He called this a thicker toner that is hydrating. He calls it super soothing to the skin and he is totally right. He also talks about this trend of the seven skin method where you're supposed to like apply seven different layers of your toner and wait in between them. Apparently that's too much. So James Welsh has said that he does the foreskin method. The foreskin method, foreskin. <laughs> I am five and a half years old. I am so sorry. But for real, um, he only does four layers of this. And um, I have been meaning to test that theory out. But if I were to do so, I don't know if I would use this one. This one is very jelly. I feel like four layers of this would be more than enough. Whereas this one that I initially purchased thinking it would be a little bit more gelatinous ended up being more watery. And this boy, this one is thick. This is like the corgi of toners. Look at how much of this you get. It is a hydrating water, but you put a little bit in your hand, on your face, or on one of those reusable eco-friendly little cotton pads. And um, you don't go through this very quickly. It is definitely much more liquidy, um, which I was not expecting. James Welsh called this his favorite toner. He said it was super hydrating but not heavy. It has 45% green tea water, so it's very calming on the skin. And although I have been enjoying this one, it's not my absolute favorite. I definitely like this one a little bit better as an essence. Um, for my toners, I don't mind them being mildly exfoliating. I'm usually looking for something that helps me out with my blackheads. And it just goes to show that although James and I both have oily skin, I am oily and acne prone, and I have some issues I wanna deal with. And he is oily and rosacea prone, and he wants that glow, and he definitely loves the dew more than I do. Doo doo? Doo doo. Mountain dew? Scooby doo? Oh boy. Back to Indeed Labs, he also recommended this. This is the Hydra Laron Cream Cleanser for all skin types. But he specifically said that he also agrees it's for all skin types and you can use it every day. He called it a really gentle yet still exfoliating cleanser that really removes sunscreen and dirt and whatever it is that accumulated on your epidermis throughout the day. And he really called out the hyaluronic acid, the glycerin, and the grapeseed oil for guess what? it's hydration. This was nice. James is right. It's really non-stripping. I don't find it to be as exfoliating as he did. Again, there's enzymes in here which are exfoliating and they are very, very mild. And um, even when you do have ingredients in a skincare product, depending on the formulation, the formulation can impact how efficacious they actually are, how much you feel them. It does give my skin a nice glow, a nice little luminosity, but it's not overdone. And he explained how it makes a milky, creamy consistency and it 
definitely does. I would say that if the Inky Lists Oat Cleanser is just like too much, it's like too greasy for you, but something like the Holica Holica Aloe Cleanser is too stripping for you, this is going to be a happy medium. This is right in the middle, and if you're not looking to strip, but you don't want to feel oily as you get out of the shower or like you apply your next steps, this is again, like he mentioned, super gentle and it is super wonderful on the skin. I'm actually really impressed with Indeed Labs. There was one of their lip products that I was not the biggest fan of, but although I don't like this color because I really don't like pink, I do put up with it because it does feel nice on my pores. There are a few other things that James Welsh made me buy, such as this sunscreen from Keep Cool, uh, but we'll save that for another day. So if you're not subscribed and don't have that notification bell and like button hit, you might not get it because we have been posting exclusive videos and little live streams and cut downs and then taking them down. And if you're not subscribed, you might not see them. All of this really goes to show that you could have a similar skin type to someone, but if you live in different environments, he's in the UK where the weather is very different than here in California and San Francisco. And again, just because we both have oily skin, he likes the dew way more than I do. And my oily prone skin appreciates his recommendations, but it doesn't jive with 100% of them, and that is a-okay. Different products for different people and different sips for different skins. Sips, I don't, you know, I don't know. Don't question me. Look, it was hot chocolate all along. There's a video coming out based on something else that James Welsh made me try and a few reactions too. And if you don't have that subscribe and notification bell hit, make sure that they are and that the like button is also smashed for the mighty YouTube algorithm and to be a good cult member. Show your support here, come on now. But we have been posting little videos, little sneak peeks, and even some live streams, both here and on other social media. And some of those cut downs, we end up taking down. So if you're not subscribed with the notification bell on, you might not see them. Either way, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, follow all of your cult rules, and apply your SPF daily. And I cannot wait to see you in this next video. I'm gonna go wash this cleanser off my hands instead of wiping it on my pants or the carpet like I normally do. Hi, I am definitely adult and not a five-year-old stuck in some lady's hyperactive body. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.